It's the comic book show. It's the comic book show. It's the comic book show. Yeah. Welcome back to Twin Galaxies Live, where every Wednesday at 9 p.m. PST we do the comic book show. This is where we've gathered an all-star cast of comic book experts from around the web to bring you this week's comic book news, <laughs> reviews, previews, and discussions. That was the best. First segment of the night is, as always, he's drinking. I chose the moment when he was drinking. <laughs> First segment is... The Daily Planet. <laughs> where we fill you in on this past week's news revolving around your favorite comic book characters. Oh, that was fun. So, Drew Goddard... Mm. Who was the man who started out this whole Daredevil thing? It was amazing. Yes. Can't wait for Daredevil season two. Drew Goddard, who penned the Sinister Six script, confirmed that Spider Man was very much involved in the shelled film and revealed that the film would have been a standalone feature. So the movie going audience wouldn't need any backstory for it to make sense to them, but everybody knows Spider Man, so I don't know yeah. what kind of backstory you really needed. That being said, the film could totally fit in the MCU and may still be on Sony's radar. What do you guys think? Who makes up your uh, Sinister Six? Name the team, and then is this something that could work as a standalone movie in the MCU? I think it could. Who do you want to see on the team? Definitely Doc Ock. Yeah. Venom. Sandman. Electro. Chameleon. Chameleon. Terrible Spider-Man movies. He did. Throw and back. a rhino! You can't do it without Mysterio. No, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with some of the animals, but with Mysterio, I'm going to go with Rhino. Electro. Sandman. Mysterio, Craven, the Vulture. So Warner Brothers and DC Entertainment announced, and I'm really excited about this, that they're developing a Booster Gold and Blue Beetle feature film directed by Greg Berlanti. That's awesome. Who's been the executive producer for the DC shows like Arrow, The Flash, and Supergirl, and like half of the shows on TV right okay. now. And here's the question I have for you guys, because when I first heard that this was going to be a movie, I said, what about a TV series? Here's what's really interesting about this bit of news to me is that it shows, like a lot of people suspected when DC announced their feature film Slate, that they were just pulling out of their ass. They were just trying to put together a list of exciting things that they wanted to rival Marvel with, but yeah. obviously it's still in flux if something like this can get into development. Yeah. Yeah. I would see this as being an example of there being lots of room for something creative and light in the DC cinematic universe. Yeah. I gotta say the one cool thing that really comes out of all of this too is because Greg Berlanti can duck and weave, as you said, to, to turn your phrase, between film and television, we know that uh, Stephen Amell has been wanting to get into film, so Ooh. it's not outside of the realm to say, all right, we can get Arrow in the cinematic universe and we can get Booster Gold and Blue Beetle in the TV universe. Especially having Booster the Gold same Blue guy Beetle. pull all the strings could actually work out really well. You guys just right. been used! Whoa, bam! That's right. Oh, oh, oh Luke is good. That was good. This moves us into the interactive portion of the show. It's the danger room! Oh. It's Marvel vs. DC, and you at home yeah. gets to decide who wins. Oh. Okay, guys, so I got Star Wars number nine. So this is picking up from last issue where uh, Luke is chasing after the person who uh, stole his lightsaber. Well, it turns out the person that stole the lightsaber is working for uh, this lobby guy, the Gracchus the Hut. And the reason why he wants this lightsaber is because he's a collector of all things Jedi memorabilia. One of those things that he also wants to collect is Luke himself, because it's also revealed that he's the very last Jedi. What? Never ceasing to amaze, DC is presenting Constantine the Hellblazer number four. This book is actually really, really great. It starts off with John Constantine reliving his old rock days with his old girlfriend. Now, these ghosts are starting to haunt him, and he does this amazing magic trick where he's like, look, all of you, you don't want to learn real magic. So basically, he summons all of his friends, and then he feeds them up to this demon creature huh. because his ghosts are trying to have him help. And this demon creature is devouring people's ghosts, so now we're talking like after afterlife, I guess. Great comic, Constantine the Hellblazer number four. DC has handily taken round one, which means they present first here in round two. Okay, so DC is presenting Bizarro number four of six. So Bizarro seems dead set on watching a magic show with our favorite magician, uh, Zatanna. Uh, Bizarro volunteers because he's Zatanna's smallest fan. Got a little <laughs> play on words. Uh, a lot of fun, there's like a dimension of trees that are government. They apparently, uh, Bizarro uh, absorbs Zatanna's magic and now he's unintentionally performing reverse magic. All right, guys, if you guys aren't reading the Secret War stuff, uh, you guys are really missing out on what Marvel's doing. I, I think this is an amazing love letter to their history, but 
there's multiple places in this new Secret Wars uh, world, and one of them is the Age of Apocalypse reality. Ah! In the Age of Apocalypse reality, when this book starts, Apocalypse has just released the Legacy Virus, which is supposed to kill mutants and leave humans in... Apocalypse is like, screw it. I'll be stronger than this. I'm stronger than the legacy virus. Problem is, he's not. Oh my god, it's a tie. DC presents Green Lantern Lost Army number four. Um, if you guys remember, they are captured in the old universe right before it's about to collapse. It's really tragic. They actually are torturing small creatures, trying to get all of their last emotions out of them, trying to no. fuel the emotional spectrum before things fall down. So the stakes are very real. Whoa! <laughs> Can't believe nobody's done that before. Uh, Guys, so I got Captain America White. Number one, it's because of the white. <laughs> uh, this is actually this is actually a really emotional story. It's it's like here. This is dedicated to Joe Simon and uh, Jack Kirby. It's really a love letter from. Uh, uh, two white guys to two Steven, more white guys. Yes. This week, is, uh, DC has taken it. It's the Infinity Gauntlet. This is where you guys come up with your favorite characters and give it to us, and we discuss it on who would win in a battle to the death. There's the Wizard Shazam versus Gandalf. Nah. Yeah. Green Lantern versus though. Invisible One. What if the Riddler versus the Question? <laughs> yes! Guys, sorry, Constantine there's a lot versus of, Harry there's Potter. A lot of chat. <laughs> what do you say? I did like Constantine versus Harry Potter. <laughs> Alright, let's do Constantine versus Harry Potter. <laughs> yes! Wait, you're trying to get into a bar? Briefly, what, give us Constantine real briefly, somebody. He's much cooler. Constantine, yeah. he, little bit, he just his was a dabbler in the dark arts and then he got way more into it, like he way dabbled. in over his head. Way in over. Uh, but he, he had such a confident, arrogant swagger that he was never actually over his head. He just used every bad experience to learn from. Fair He's enough. willing to screw everybody over for literally any reason at all. Or screw um, anybody for any reason. Yep, that too. His powers, what are they in a nutshell? Just dark arts? Just ridiculously good at magic. Spell powers. And uh, Harry Potter is also somebody who is generally regarded as ridiculously good at magic. He has a stick. He has a cloak. That's all I know. I think this is a pretty sad matchup, to be honest. <laughs> I think it makes me sad. Well, considering I mean, that Harry Potter is still a child and he probably would get scared at some of the things that constantly would show him, he could also just smack the glasses <laughs> off his face. That, oh god, he before you said that, off. that's exactly what I thought in my mind. I just want to see him smack glasses. Uh, I like Run Quickly Fools. Uh, Constantine <laughs> would sleep with Hermione, therefore putting Harry Potter into Aww. a depression. <laughs> and thus Constantine could murder Harry. Yeah. True. Hey, done. Yeah. True. Great. Oh, by the way, guys, this is the Watchtower, where we well, basically just we do? talk about all the stuff, everything we want to talk about. Here's a here's a question: Are all you the guys? Thing that's fit to print. Demon said, "I guess I didn't finish the story." He said, "I didn't understand comics cost money, so I cut it up and glued it to my wall when I was a kid. <gasps> kind of stupid for a six-year-old me." Well, we all blew up our JJs yeah. and Transformers, uh, and, and, and we true. all blew up our Star Wars toys. We feel for you, brother. Here's the thing, though. I oh did the God. same thing with my Xena and Hercules magazines, but they're worth less than <laughs> when I actually cut them out and paste them on. And he was no, also no, less in college. Less, uh, time. It's not worth less. They're worthless. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> Wait, we have a really important question. Hellraiser says, what is the most craziest thing you ever did? <laughs> Lucas? Don't say anything illegal that you don't want on a record. Oh. No kissing restrictions. Uh, like okay, there was one time I was really drunk, okay. and I was running really fast, and okay. I jumped as high as I could, pretending like I could fly, and I rolled my foot, and I had to walk with a cane for like two weeks. You're pimping, dog. Wow. Quest. I think the dumbest thing I ever did was this time. When I was like 14, I knocked this bike cop's helmet off, Jesus. and I started a bike chase with him. <laughs> and this, this was in Virginia Beach, so it was on the it was on the boardwalk, and I got away. But he, he you got away. He called back. He called for backup. So it was two like little fat bike cops with these short shorts. Were like, <laughs> and then my iP iPod in was like the first generation giant block, and I was playing like some action music, one of four songs on it. And I was like, this is amazing. And then I stopped. And I'm like, that looks really dumb. I, ate, I I drink soda and pop rocks. Did you die? <laughs> I'm still here and I died. Did you die? Did you live? I used to work at Six Flags. Yeah. I was what? Batman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was Batman in the Batman Begins Sun show. Um, and I used to have to drive the tumbler for the parade. But we took it to uh, 
We took it to Wendy's one time and we ordered drive-thru. <laughs> That's awesome. That, that is crazy. amazing. That is awesome. What'd they do? Well, it's funny. Did you have your Batman outfit on? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. We, yes. was, the stupid thing is the car's windows don't roll down. So, how so you? you have to lift up this giant Lambo door. <laughs> so, like, we pull up to the just the speaker box and it's... <laughs> Can I get some, ch some chicken nuggets? <laughs> but you, do you say it as mad or do you say it no, as I, Batman? No, I, I did it in the Batman voice. Yeah, you gotta do it in the Batman, Batman voice. Batman voice. I actually wrecked two squad cars. What? <laughs> I beat my bike cop story. Wait, wait, what? I crashed into the back of a squad car so hard that it smashed into the other squad car that was in front of it so hard that both of them were completely totaled. Oh, and, two for one. Yep, and, and they, it, okay. took, it took two tow trucks one pulling a squad car one way and one pulling my car this way to disengage them because I smashed parked. them so hard. So guys, that was the comic book show. You can see us right here every yeah. Wednesday night on Twin Galaxies Live. And also, we're on Stan Lee's World of Heroes YouTube channel. Those are the cut down versions. If you just have a little bit of time to enjoy your dun, comic book goodness. Dun. Be sure to tweet at us. We're official TCBS. And like us on Facebook, yeah. facebook.com slash official TCBS. Yeah, like us, follow us, do all the things on the socials. And we promise that we totally will eventually get that list of comic book recommendations up. We That's will be totally a do that we'll one actually day! Totally make a decision! <laughs> oh, that one. <worked. laughs> it's all right. <laughs>people were like, oh, that's such a beautiful story that, that a fictional character like Mario got you through such a tough time as a kid and your parents divorced. And my wife put out on Twitter, she goes, and if you collect any more Amiibo, Mario will have to get you through another divorce. <laughs> <laughs> it's the comic book show. It's the comic book show. It's the comic book show.